Some good news on SNAP benefits, otherwise known as food stamps, for the low income as lawmakers finalize the farm bill. I have all the details and exactly what you need to know right here in the video. Let's get right into it. All right, we are right down to the wire on lawmakers finalizing the farm bill, which is that piece of legislation that they must negotiate once every five years, and it is now time. Now, the last time that they negotiated the details of the farm bill was way back in 2018, and I'm filming this this video in the end of 2023 and guess what it is now time yet again for them to do that well we're getting new information on what they want to include in the farm bill and like I said a minute ago it's actually some good news because leading up to this we've had some suspicions that they may want to change this and make it harder for beneficiaries to get snap benefits as well as add some other restrictions into the program well I do have some good news for you here in this video and again I do want to share with you exactly what I'm seeing out there right now with all the research and what they're likely going to be doing with the farm bill that will impact SNAP benefits and the 43 million SNAP beneficiaries across the country, which by the way, one in eight Americans receive SNAP benefits. That's a lot of people, right? Anyway, let's get into it and talk through the details and I'll share with you exactly everything that I know as of right now as they come into the final steps of the negotiations on this farm bill, a very, very influential piece of legislation. We've been waiting for it for a while now and we are right down to the wire. Let's get into it really really fast before we do thanks for joining me if you have not done so yet please subscribe down below it's totally free to do so the big subscribe button waiting down there make sure to hit that if you have not done so yet also make sure to stay tuned as things are changing very rapidly between now and the end of the year and 2024 we'll be crazy busy with a lot of things changing for the low income and fixed income beneficiaries also make sure to hit the like button or the thumbs up button down below it helps other people find this video and it gives me anonymous feedback on videos like this to better understand if this was helpful if it was informative if it was educational and again if it was on point with what I said I was going to talk about right here in this video so again thanks again please subscribe down below like the video and let's get into it and talk about the good news that I do want to share with you and how this will impact snap beneficiaries in a pretty big way. All right, so remember, back on September 1st and back on October 1st, we got a couple major changes to the SNAP benefit program, mostly including the work requirements. Remember, those are some of the changes that came out of the negotiations on the debt ceiling deal way back in May and June of this year, 2023, right? So those came into effect as of September and October, and then obviously the new fiscal year started October 1st and the COLA went into effect a whopping 3.5%. For SNAP beneficiaries, by the way, I'm being sarcastic, 3.5% is nothing. That's nothing at all, right? And then some other changes to the SNAP benefit program, but not a whole lot. But remember, at that same time, October 1st, the farm bill was supposed to be done. They didn't do it, okay? Again, I said this basically all summer long. I was saying it's not going to be done by October 1st. I guarantee it. Well, here we are <laughs> approaching the end of the year and it's still not done, okay? But here's the thing. They are coming to the final details on this thing. Now, there's a couple different remarks out there as of right now, but I do want to share with you exactly what I've been finding on this because I'm not seeing a whole lot of bad out there, which is really, really good because remember, they were talking about and floating the ideas of possibly increasing the age on the work requirements yet again, okay? Making it harder to get SNAP benefits. But here's what I'm finding. Looks like number one, they're likely not going to be including or raising the work re uh, requirement ages on this, okay? So that's good, remember? As of October 1st, it, uh, it changed yet again. And remember, October 1st of next year, 2024, it will be changing yet again at that time but let's not worry about that right now, okay? That's practically a year away as of right now. We will focus on that when the time comes, but it looks like uh, they're not going to be changing that any further. They're not gonna be tightening it up anymore, which again was a major risk because that is something that was floating around suggesting that they may be doing to these SNAP benefits, okay? Now remember, here's another thing that I've talked about before, and again, I want to bring this to your attention. There was also talk about potentially restricting the purchasing of different foods with SNAP benefits. In other words, sugary and salty foods. Now remember, you've seen me go off on a rant on other videos talking about this. How would they manage this? How would they determine exactly what would be determined as a salty or sugary food? And how would they really figure that out? I mean, seriously, how many items are in a grocery store, right? A lot. I mean, I have no clue. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. I literally have no idea. There's a lot of different products in a grocery store, right? How will they determine what would be classified as a sugary or salty food? And like I said before in other videos, 
How insulting would it be to go to the checkout counter, right? The cashier is going through your items one by one saying, you can get this, sorry, you can't get that. You can have this, you can't have this because this is in the category that they say you can't buy it, okay? How humiliating would that be? Yeah, that would not be very cool, right? So it sounds like with the legislation that's out there and what lawmakers have talked about as far as restricting purchases of these sugary and salty foods and things like this, it looks like they're not going to be including that into the farm bill, okay? That's a huge relief because that could have caused a major headache. However, there is some talk about incentivizing slash encouraging SNAP beneficiaries to buy more healthy food options, which by the way, let me take a second here and ask you a question. If they placed healthy food options, now again, fill in the blank with whatever you feel is, would be a healthy food option. I don't know. I, again, they're just talking about healthy food options. I'm not sure if this is referring to uh, produce and things like that. I'm not really sure. They just continue to say healthy food options. So I'm not, you know, maybe it's a bin of apples or something or bananas or broccoli. I, I don't really know, okay? <laughs> they didn't specify exactly what they're talking about. But let me ask you a really question. I'm, I'm curious to what your opinion is on this, okay? I'd love to hear your feedback down below in the comment section, by the way, if you're interested in sharing this. But I'm curious, if they placed it in a more convenient area, as in right by the checkout counter, if they had all kinds of bins of produce, apples, bananas, pears, uh, broccoli, as asparagus, whatever, uh, what else do people get? Spinach, you know what I mean? All kinds of stuff like this. Would you be more willing to buy this type of food, okay? The, the reason I'm asking that is this is what I've been seeing out there is they're trying to add some type of legislation into the farm bill that would encourage uh, SNAP beneficiaries to buy more items like this. And the way that they're trying to do it is to try to get grocers to add these items closer to the checkout and basically make it so that you have to walk around these displays and make it kind of inconvenient so that you almost have to like bump into the display and be like oh my look at that a big bin of apples maybe i should buy a couple <laughs> you know what i mean so that's literally what they're talking about is how can we encourage these people to buy more healthy food options i don't know that's what i'm curious to you is if you had a bin of broccoli in the middle of the aisle and you literally had to walk around it in order to get to the checkout counter would it encourage you to buy some broccoli i i don't know <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> this is literally what they're talking about okay i'm very curious for me i don't know i honestly i would not know if that would encourage me or not maybe i don't know well broccoli i'm just being real with you I don't know if, uh, I'm not sure if really anything could encourage me to buy broccoli. I'm just saying, okay, maybe put some like really good dip next to it or something. <laughs> maybe something like that would work, but I don't know if that would fall into the healthy food option, right? <laughs> just being real with you, okay? However, apples are pretty good, but you know, that's just what it is. So my point is, I'm curious to see what you would have to say with that, uh, because this is something that they are literally talking about. But as of right now, it looks like one other point that I wanna share with you is they may not have the farm bill done before the end of the year. Again, huge shocker, right? Yeah, not, okay? We're not surprised about that. So what they're actually talking about is potentially even pushing out the farm bill until next year, 2024, okay? Like I said, I'm filming this video kind of near the end of the year 2023. There's a little bit of time left, a few weeks here, but not that much time left here in 2023, okay? But they're talking about maybe pushing this out until 2024 uh, in order to give them more time to solidify this. Now, would that be a good or bad thing? Honestly, in my opinion, I think that would be a good thing. The reason being is, if they were right down to the wire and they must get this thing done before the end of the year, I'm afraid that they would make some bad decisions and possibly say, ah, let's just forget it. Who cares? Let's just add this in there and let's just get it over with, okay? I don't think that would be the best interest of everybody. Remember, the farm bill, 80% <clears throat> of the farm bill is focused on SNAP benefits, okay? 80% of it. Very important stuff. Now, you might be thinking the farm bill is all about tractors and corn and soybeans and stuff like that, right? No, it's not. 80% of it is focused on SNAP benefits. So very, very important stuff. So anyway, this is what I wanna share with you here in this video. It's good because here's the thing, it could have been a lot worse, okay? They could have added in that legislation which would restrict purchases of sugary and salty foods. Again, fill in the blank with that. There's like a million options of salty and sugary foods. And again, like I said before in other videos, how would they determine that? Would they sit there and literally micromanage somebody at the checkout counter telling them you can and can't buy stuff? I'd say, hey, shove it. I'll buy whatever I want, right? Yeah, get out of my face. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think I wouldn't be the only person saying things like that because I think if you have it in your cart and you take it to the checkout counter, you probably want to buy it. I mean, unless it like fell into your cart accidentally, I doubt it, right? <laughs> I'm just saying, right? If you put it in your cart, you probably want it. Leave us alone, right? 
Anyway, that's my opinion on that. But, you know, I'm a little bit extreme about that stuff because I just feel like stop micromanaging us when it comes down to these things. But anyway, uh, it could have been a lot worse, okay? So that could have been one thing that they could have added in. And next, they also could have raised the um, the work requirement re yeah, work requirement ages on this thing, remember, that uh, that started as of September 1st and October 1st as well. But as of right now, it looks like it's going to be unchanged for now. So that's good stuff. And by the way, the work requirements go into effect for those people that are falling into the category of ABAWD, okay? Able-bodied adults without dependents. I've made dedicated videos talking about that. I've had a lot of questions asking, wait, do I fall into this category? Uh, what about me, you know? And again, I have dedicated videos talking about that. That is a, it's kind of a complicated, it's honestly a little bit confusing to talk through the details, but basically if you are outside of the age range of what they determine uh, for the work requirements, and if you are somebody with a disability, you do not fall into that category, okay? So able-bodied adults without dependents would simply mean an able-bodied person within the age ranges that they've identified who does not have dependents. And by able-bodied, again, this is what I've said before in other videos, and I, got, I again, I know I'm kind of walking a tightrope here when I say this stuff, but just kind of give me the benefit of the doubt here. What I'm saying is I'm trying to explain this in such a way that makes sense. But basically, if somebody has a disability, they're not falling into the category of able-bodied, okay? Does that kind of make sense? Anyway, I don't want to go down this rabbit hole because it's honestly a big topic in and of itself, and it's kind of confusing to talk through the details, but I do have a, de a dedicated videos here on the channel talking exactly about this and explaining in detail what this all means, giving the age ranges and stuff like that, and answering the questions about disabilities. Would you be um, you know, at risk of losing your benefits if you have a disability receiving the SNAP benefits? The simple answer is no, not necessarily because somebody with a disability is not considered able to bodied, if that kind of makes sense, right? Which by the way, I'm blind. So I mean, I fall right into that category. I am one of the disabled people, okay? So I'm not like sitting here being like, ah, you know, whatever, and acting like, you know, disabled people, stuff like that, because I'm right in that category, right there with you, okay? Uh, if that is you, somebody, okay? So just make sure to check out the other videos here on the channel. I talked through the details very clearly. I made it, uh, I hopefully, easy to understand as far as who would be eligible for that. But uh, check out those videos as well. Otherwise, with that being said, um, good stuff, okay? This is a lot better news than we could have expected to see out of lawmakers. They could have made it a lot harder and they could have made it a lot worse than uh, what we were expecting here. So remember, anything is subject to change. Any of this could change over the coming days, weeks, and who knows, months <laughs> until they get the farm bill completely solidified and done. But until then, at least it's looking pretty good right now, okay? This is what we know as of right now. And of course, as I get more information or as this thing passes, of course, I'll bring it to your attention. But right now, it's looking pretty good, okay? It's good. It could change. But as of right now, it probably doesn't look like it. Anyway, I'll keep you posted. Please make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet. Share the video with your friends, family, social media, and go back and check out any of the other thousands of videos here on the channel. And also make sure to hit that like button down below helps other people find this video. And again, it just gives me f anonymous feedback to understand, was this helpful? And, uh, you know, did you find it to be informative with the information that I shared with you here? Anyway, enjoy your day. Take care. Have a good one and catch you again later.